Exodus chapter 23 Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to do be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden, and wouldst forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise, and perverteth the words of the righteous. And thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. And six years thou shalt sow thy land, and shalt gather in the fruits thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and lie still, that the poor of thy people may eat, and what they leave the beasts of the field shall eat. In like manner thou shalt deal with the vineyard and with the olive yard. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee in the time appointed in the month Abib, for in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And the feast of the harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Three items in the year, all thy males, shall appear before the Lord God. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord. Thou shalt not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs to thee, and I will send hornets before thee which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. I will not drive them out before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beast of the field multiply against thee. But little by little I will drive them out from before thee, until thou be increased and inherit the land. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea, even unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out from be thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, I it will surely be a snare unto thee. Thus far we have seen in what we would referred to as the law of Moses, the laws of retribution, the laws of restitution. But here we see Heavenly Father giving these people a higher level of law, something that is to get them to think better 
than just a slave mentality. Slave mentality is you're serving somebody because you have no choice. You do the minimum you can get away with. And that was the attitude that many of them had. And he had to lift their vision and lift it. Now, he had to, otherwise they were going to be useless to him and to themselves. Most people think of the law of Moses as an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And although there's an element of that because the Lord had to deal with what the people had as a background and a mental attitude, here in the first eight verses of chapter 23, he's giving them a much higher law. He's telling them in the time, uh, in verse 1, when there is uh, gossip and bribery, uh, gossip and backbiting and slander, that they're, they're supposed to be honorable people. They're supposed to do what is right. They're supposed to talk properly, all the rest of it. Uh, when there is... Uh, verse 2, fads and evil, don't join yourself to fads of people that are doing evil. That doesn't make any difference what the concept is or whether how many people there are. Evil is evil, whether it's accepted by your society or not. Whether it's accepted by the political society, the economic society, the social society, evil is evil. And it doesn't make any difference whether it's a little bit or a lot. It's still evil. Don't get involved. Uh, do be involved in helping your neighbors and being a good part of your community. You're not in this on your own. You want Heavenly Father to help you? He wants you to help those people that are in your circle of influence. Um, don't afflict the poor and the downtrodden. Don't add to their burdens. Don't take advantage of them. How many times in the last year we're doing this in the December 2008. How many times in the last year have we seen stories about huge organizations and individuals who have stolen money from their company, from individuals, and, oh, well, it's just too bad. It was something I did, but, I, you know, okay. There will be a punishment for them for that. Now, thou shalt not steal was known as far back as the creation of, with Adam and Eve. They knew they shouldn't do that. All mankind know they shouldn't do that. They don't need to be told. But here they're in, they're warned. This is the basic minimum. This is what you're this is what you're supposed to do. And if you're in a position as a judge, or you're in a position where you might have a responsibility to make decisions or speak out, don't take any bribes, don't take any gifts from anybody. Any bribes you take are going to corrupt any decision, any gifts you take. People are going to think that you took them and the decisions that you make are not going to be righteous. So, we have here a much higher standard of law than just the minimum law of retribution, than the minimum law of revenge, than the minimum law of what happens if a slave runs away and you do something to them. You have an exhortation, a desire, a goal, a lifting of your vision, to do what is right, whether you want to or not, because it is the right thing to do. To think for yourself, what would God want me to do in this situation? And that's what you're supposed to do in this life. Everything that's in the scripture is for us to pay attention to and get a message from as to how we're supposed to live now. And these are examples. These are cultural things that were appropriate to them but they have, we have the same thing here. It's like, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, excuse me. Uh, gods can be tools. Gods can be TV. Gods can be sports. God can be watching things, going places, doing things that are not righteous. Anything you put before your observance of Heavenly Father's rules for righteous living is a god. And he's trying to tell these people that they need to lift their vision and get with the message.